Folks, I gotta say thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I think probably one of the most important series whether it be Canadian, American, or whatever else, um, is this one. And I have to say, thank you so much for being brave enough to be able to put something together like this, um, something that I remember growing up with, um, you know, and, and knowing that I've had friends, high school friends, who are no longer here today because of what happened during the 80s. So I want to say straight off the bat, thank you so much for bringing this to life. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, it wasn't easy. I mean, truth is, growing up through it the way I did, um, you dealt with a lot of stigma and prejudice. And, you know, there were a lot of times where you were afraid to talk to people about it. In fact, it was pretty much all the time. Uh, I grew up with a disease called hemophilia. It's a genetic bleeding disorder. And, um, you know, there were times when I didn't, didn't wear my bracelet because I didn't want people to know uh, that I could potentially have AIDS. And um, that's in large part why this whole thing went on, as long as it did. Um, people were afraid to speak out. When you approach CBC with this, I mean, talk a little bit about the process of having this be put together and your thoughts when they said, okay, this is going to be a go, we're going to do this. Uh, I had <laughs> been working with them. I developed uh, a different show that didn't go forward. And... Um, you know, I knew Sally Cato. We had sort of become friends, and she uh, was a big supporter of mine. I'm, I'm real grateful uh, to her for having uh, made this show. Um, I wrote this sort of long rant. I had just recently been cured of hep C after 30 years, and uh, I think that allowed me to take on a little more of a storyteller's perspective, mindset, as opposed to being a victim. And uh, I wrote this, I think, 20-page angry rant that really had very little structure to it at all. And I, I, so. I, yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I honestly feel they responded to the passion rather than the content. Um, and I think that has been the goal from the get-go of making this, was to take all of the information, and there's a lot of it, um, distill that down to passion, to emotion, so that we feel... Uh, what happened because there's no way to possibly distill it all down into eight hours there's no way to tell the whole story all we could hope to do was capture in some way some little essence of what it was like what it felt like to go through it what were your thoughts when you found out you were going to be involved with this and talk a little bit about your character too please because they said we grew up during that time when this was going on there was information that i knew but there was probably more information i did not know and i'm hoping this series is going to put a little bit more light to what i didn't know absolutely um i mean to, to start off i play margaret sanders who's uh the mother of one of the two families that we tell this story uh through their eyes and i think you know we're all I think indebted to Rob, I know it's going to make you squirm, but for the story should be told by somebody who experienced it firsthand. Mm -hmm. And it's really brave to step forward and kind of put your hand up. And so, you know, when I read it, I was moved by the script and then I met Rob and I started having conversations with him about how personal this was. And, you know, you ask what my response was to be a part of it. I felt tremendously honored um, to be a part of a story that matters so much. You know, as entertainers, there's a lot of stories that we tell and we love them all for different reasons. The first person that I ever watched die died of AIDS. And watching him die was one thing. Watching society hate all over him for being a gay man was another thing. And to tell a story that has a small piece of restoring some dignity to his legacy, I can't think of anything I'd rather do. Amen. Yeah, it's, Amen. It's, it's amazing to, to be in the position of speaking for, I mean, it's, as much as it, some of it is based on my own experience, we all felt that we were speaking for people who were no longer around to speak for themselves. I want to ask the same thing, uh, your character, if you explain your character in this series, and your thoughts, again, when you think about what was going on back then, and they said, we grew up through that, to what we are learning through this story and what we're representing now to folks who didn't know about this. Sure. So I play Ben Landry, who's a journalist and who has a son who's uh, infected with hemophilia. And uh, ultimately, we think he has HIV. Uh, when Robert first approached me about it, I was more interested in the other character, played wonderfully by Michael Shanks, Will, 
who's uh, Sarah's husband in the show. And uh, that character is very active and they have a very strong relationship as opposed to my family. My marriage is on the rocks and it becomes more strained as time goes on because of this tragedy that we're dealing with. Um, but as I read the scripts and talked more with Rob about his history and where he was coming from and I started to understand the scope of what story he was trying to tell, I just felt honored to be asked to be part of it. And ultimately, uh, my character is modeled on a number of journalists, one of which is uh, Vic Parsons. He wrote one of the seminal books of the period called Bad Blood. And there's a chapter where he discusses his relationship with his son, who went through a similar experience. And, uh, and that really hit home for me. It made it, it made it a very human struggle and made it it took it away from the politics and the, the large machine that allowed this to happen into something that was very uh, uh, tangible for me as a performer and, and so I was very moved and very happy to be part of it yeah I mean it's one thing to to find out someone you love is sick or that you're sick and that you're vulnerable and dependent on a system that may or may not be there to help you it's another thing to then find out that that illness was preventable mm -hmm. yeah. and and some of the revelations I believe you know for people who are unfamiliar with the story are going to be shocking like uh, shocking that it happened anywhere much less in in Canada where we sort of have this impression of being you know very upstanding polite caring people I'm, 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 I'm just uh, and thought just hit me when you were talking about being a journalist and I want to ask you this on a personal note uh, for myself being a journalist for the last 30 years but during this time did journalists did we report on this correctly were we part of the problem when this was going on uh, no I mean it wasn't that it, you were part of the you uh, the, the journalists were part of the problem the, the there was trust in institutions there was trust in people being what, what people were being told and we we've talked a lot today about the fact that one of the I think modern ideas that that is so you know important about this series is that the truth is being kind of called into question these days and journalists themselves are being called into question and you know Andre Picard who wrote uh, The Gift of Death which is another one of the books we base the show on you know, he admits in the foreword that it took him almost nine years to realize what was going on and to understand that, that the institutions he was trusting were actually pulling the wool over his eyes. And so, you know, this, this story is about why the truth sometimes gets covered up and, uh, and what aids that and how do we combat it. And, and I mean, number one is uh, people speaking out. And, and unfortunately, you know, we still live in a society where there's enough prejudice that people feel uh, afraid that their voice, you know, isn't going to be heard or will bring scrutiny down on them. Looking forward to seeing this. I want to say again, thank you so much, folks, for being part of something like this. That is very, very special, very, very important. And like I said, um, let, let's, let's start talking about this. Let's have the truth come out. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.